Hello, Katrina. How are you, dear? I usually start the program program by saying, <laughs> "Hello, everyone." <laughs> but tonight is special. It's a one-on-one -on -one with Katrina. Katrina Andrea, would you kindly let me know um, the you know age and the place where you're tuning in from just like we always do the protocol gender age where you which country you're tuning in from or which city alexander is here says hello Miran. how are you nice to meet here again <laughs> saying hello everyone i hope you're all here. <laughs> that's right thank you for saying that because i could only say it uh, to one person katrina who's ignoring me right now <laughs> doesn't doesn't i guess she's here by screen name but not personally <laughs> and major paper says hello Maren, 25 mail from france ah thank you for that look there is a french discipline we have the gender age and the nationality like where she's tun he's tuning in from so there we go and the alexander you know, doesn't care. <laughs> Karen, Katrina doesn't care. We need the protocol, guys, my good people. <laughs> uh, age, gender, where are you tuning in from? Uh, Katrina says, I'm a man. <laughs> okay, see? There you go. If you hadn't said that you're a man, uh, I would think Katrina is, uh, you know, falls for the woman's name. So uh, thank you for that. So it's 20 years old from Romania. Aha. Uh -huh. And is Katrina a male name in Romania or is it um, just a screen name you chose? Hmm. Not a bad tea. So we have five people here, four, three visible, two invisible, zero likes. I wonder why I'm here and anyhow then. <laughs> and Nova is here. Hi, Mehran. Hello, Nova. Guys girls protocol 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 gender age where are you tuning in from major paper says you helped me a lot with hocd i'm pretty much cured but still when i see a beautiful girl on the street i have my doubts coming out that it may be a transgender so that scares the hell out of me why you have no knowledge of uh, what that person that you're looking at could actually be your response is to what your perception is and your perception with all what is evidence of that person's carrying herself or the way she's dressed and the way she looks is that she's a woman so you respond to that 
Now, your thoughts, intrusive thoughts, trying to cast a shadow of doubt on what your perception is, it's irrelevant. <laughs> your reaction and response is what is to what you know or think or believe at that moment that is a female, is a woman. And that's your inclination to respond to. Now, what intrusive thought shows up, it's irrelevant. Let the thoughts show up. Who cares? It's like saying, I have a hamburger that I'm about to eat, and I'm thinking that this hamburger is, um, I don't know, it's um, spaghetti, or it's, uh, it's um, um, barbecue chicken. Well, you can think whatever you want, but it's hamburger, or it looks hamburger. Maybe the hamburger meat happens to be chicken. But the way it looks and it smells and everything that you're responding to, that you want to eat it, is because you like hamburger and this represents and looks and feels and smells as hamburger. So respond to it. Now, later on, you know, the science comes out that, oh, this was chicken we had mixed and it colored it, looked like hamburger. Well, <laughs> I responded to what it seems to me and I was convinced that it was hamburger. So that's it. You don't interpret thoughts on that note or anything else it's intrusive thoughts katrina says uh andrea says it's my family name oh i see yeah okay so andrea is your first name Tanishk, Tanishk Kapoor says, hello, sir. I get negative thoughts very much, and these thoughts are very useless, like feeling someone around me and other illogical thoughts. Yeah, well, this is what brain does. You know, the problem is that uh, most of us have been programmed since childhood to think of the brain as intellect. So whatever it conjures up, we think it has merits and credibility. But when you took that um, designation of credibility and source of intellect away from the brain, and let it be known what it really is. It's an organ, not the intellect center, not a credibility guru. Then you will not pay attention to its conjuring up whatever it conjures up as if it's a fact. And therefore, you will not be affected by what you know is coming from a place not a credible source. The problem is that you all think your brain is a deity or connected to facts and truth of life. No. It's an organ like your intestine is. Honestly, your intestine is in charge of taking food and turning it into energy and the rest of it into feces and you got to go to the bathroom and get it out of you. Now the brain has a mandate too. It makes thoughts. And the thoughts that it makes are totally irrelevant to what you will use the brain to make thoughts, which is for your advancement and something that you want to accomplish or learn. But the brain uses its own apparatus and makes thought because that's its job, to make thoughts. And instead of you understanding that your role is to be the judge of the productions of the brain and not the follower and the believer of the production of the brain, then that's what messes you up. You have relinquished your understanding of your status in this entity. Your status in this entity, you, your status, is the judge 
off what the other apparatuses are doing? Are they meeting up with qualities that you expect them to meet up with and your values or not? And you're supposed to judge them. But instead, when it comes to brain, you actually think you're supposed to follow the brain. No. The brain is the most stupid part of you because it makes things on its own. Hmm? Everything else in your body has a mandate and sticks with it. And when it deviates from it, it's very clear to you, whether through scientific or medical means, or whether the fact that you know this is abnormal to what that particular apparatus or organ is designed to function, and you can tell it. Like when you have a diarrhea, and you say, well, that's not normal. You don't question that, oh, maybe diarrhea is what I've always had to, you know, produce. Oh, I doubt myself that this is actually uh, how it should have been. I never knew that I am diarrhea. No, you don't do that. You say, well, this is abnormal. This is not me. It's very clear. And you take steps to understand it, what caused it, and then try to fix it. You know, you're very clear on that. When it comes to brain, and it starts conjuring up intrusive thoughts and things that are not in line with your values, you start thinking that things that are not in line with your values may be actually your values, and not your values that always have been is actually your values. But what the fuck are you doing with yourself? Why? Why would you actually think your brain is your leader? You are the brain's leader. You are the judge. That's how you should actually see your brain. When it malfunctions and when it conjures up intrusive thoughts, all you have to see is that oh, it's not in line with my values. Therefore, these are not thoughts that I would value because they are not in line with my values. Therefore, I ignore them because I know the job of the brain is constantly making thoughts. I'm not going to constantly interpret them and then listen to them or think that they have any merits. I ignore them because they don't meet up with my standards and expectations and values. That's the end of it. You see? You have given credibility to something that does not have that credibility that you think it does. Therefore, you blindly follow what it says then you'll be affected by it because you're believing something with no fucking evidence whatsoever of any kind, any history, any of past, any meeting your choices and your values. But somehow you think, oh, because it said so. It's like saying, I believe in that person that says whatever he says. Why? That person says whatever it suits him or her. Why should you actually have any, you know, belief in what they say? You got to see if they, what they say is in line with your values, your values or not. And the same thing with the brain. But you don't do that. Therefore, you're always in trouble with not understanding what intrusive thought is and so on. Intrusive thoughts is no different then you farting or going to the bathroom, get rid of your feces. That's how you should treat them. Let them be and let them get out of your, your, your system. So let them be, let them be produced, but ignore them. Just, just like you do, you know, you don't question, oh, I've got a tummy ache. It must mean something. It must be something valuable. No, you go to the bathroom and you're sure of it, then you let it out and then it's, ah, so the thoughts are the same. Shows up, they're not meeting your values, says, ah, oh, let them go and let them be. I don't have to interpret them. I don't have to be mingled into them. And then you understand clearly that these are nonsense as far as your values are concerned. And you live by your vetoes and choices. And then you say, ah, oh, vetoes and choices is where my power, and that's how I roll, not by the suggestions and thoughts images of the brain's production because you're the master not the brain all right
Let's see. User 22 says, hello, Miran. Christoph here. Oh, hello, Christoph. How are you? You're in Germany, aren't you? And Amans is 19, male, India. Thank you for that. Alexander Orid says, Miran, your explanation to me are helpful and help me to feel better. I see some of your videos when my thoughts pop in my head. They take my attention and fear me. I cannot make them powerless again. Because <laughs> you don't you don't try to combat or um, refute or push away or uh, what is it? Uh, press down or destroy thoughts because they can have the right to be there their thoughts you know sometimes you know you walking by and there's a um, strong shiny light hits in your eyes because it bounces off some window of some stores the sunshine and so you say, ah, and then you turn your head away. You don't say, oh, that should not be there. I should look into it and make it go. No, okay, that's, if something is thrown at you, you just dodge. You don't say, oh, it should not be thrown. You know, things happen. You know, things happen in life, and they have their own rhythm. But you choose and react the way it would make it comfortable for you and get you out of that whatever that thing is trying to um you know impose itself or present itself as same thing with the thought the thought shows up you just ignore it and dodge it and go somewhere else you don't you don't engage with it try to convince the brain don't make these thoughts <laughs> let it make it it doesn't matter you have a choice Nothing can happen with brain making thoughts because you have the ultimate power to allow any thoughts to come to actuality or not. Simple as that. Nothing else. There's no power to thoughts. Hmm? You know? And you don't try to combat thoughts with another thought what you do you just change the image like you create a pictorial that represents something different than the thought is trying to paint for you in the screen of your head that's I find it more efficient than trying to debate with a thought. For example, you want to create a tranquil environment for yourself right now, right? If you keep saying, "Oh, I'm tranquil," <laughs> I'm tranquil. Oh, it's very quiet, very relaxed. But instead, if you just think about an oasis, imagine pictorial of an oasis with the pond, clear water, few big rocks around it, a waterfall from above with greeneries all around the rocks that waterfall is falling from way above into that pond. And it's nice sunshine, but it's got shade areas where you can sit and you have a sandwich or sit there with a nice cup of tea and imagine that scene in your mind look you're already calm relaxed that pictorial 
that image brought about the result you're looking for by using words. It doesn't work by using words. You don't suppress thoughts by another thought. You actually ignore them by focusing on what it is that you want to focus on that day or what you're, uh, you know, you're set out to accomplish on that day. Or you create a scene, an image of comfort and what you prefer and like in your head and let that image communicate the feeling and the status that you're looking to create rather than a word which is going to be against the words and suggestions of the brain. Hmm? So that would be a conflict because you created a word and it's got its own agenda and then the brain has created a word and suggestion and they're in conflict. Which wins? Instead, let the brain do what it says and pay no attention to it. Focus on what it is that you want to focus. A task, a goal, the image, or create a pictorial that represents how you see the world and how you want to see that moment of your life. And then submerge yourself in that. Automatically, what brain is suggesting dissipates. Because we have the propensity to go towards what's in line with our values. And we seek comfort and strength and power in what is in line with our values. And there is no conflict. You feel it's balanced. But when the brain creates something that creates conflict in you, because that is not the representation of you, regardless of who and what is the source of it, the brain or somebody out there or whatever. So you got to believe in your values and protect your values and roll in life based on your vetoes and choices which comes from your values, your what's meaningful to you, what's relevant to you, your manners, morals, your faith, or whatever it is that makes you who you are, who you want to be, who you choose to be. Hmm? All right. Let's go on to... Alexander, that helps you out. Andrea Chervenkova. Okay, I hope I didn't butcher the name. Says, hello, Mehran. I'm currently dealing with HOCD, and what makes me even more anxious is that people on the internet say that some people can change attraction during life. Is it possible or bogus? Bogus. You are made the way you are made in the womb of your mom. <laughs> and once it's made, it's hacked in stone. It's not going to change. If you are created, whatever gender you're created, that's how it's going to be the rest of your life. You can't be changing your gender by thoughts. If thoughts was able to change things that are biological so, you know, <laughs> so readily available, well, I'm sure that, you know, if I, you know, chop my finger and I think that it's coming back, then it should come back. If I think I have a million dollars in the bank, I should. No? Thought is powerful, but not that powerful it, to certain things. You want to have determ determination to run faster. You want to have determination to accomplish certain tasks. Yeah, okay, great. Projects and persevere. Oh, oh your, your, your willpower. But 
you can't be changing your gender by thinking or by intrusive thoughts showing up a suggestion you know it's like somebody is showing up you know constantly telling you something it can affect you because it's constantly telling you but it's not the fact you know this is somebody keeps walking beside me or into my ear and keeps saying um, you're this, you're not this gender, you're that gender, you're not this gender, you're that gender. It keeps saying it. So that's not going to change my gender. It's going to annoy me because I know what I am, what my preferences and choices are. But that is not going to change my biology just because it's been constantly suggested. Hmm? It may have some effect of my you know, thinking that, oh, that's the behavior that I should comply because it's constantly being brainwashed me. But in reality, it doesn't change your biology, but it may actually make you think that, is there any truth to it? The confusion, because constantly is pounding suggestions, yeah? But when you get away from it, you can see nothing has changed in you. Same thing with the brain. It constantly suggests something is intrusive thought. Something has gone haywire and malfunctioning in the signaling system of the brain. So what you do, you stay away from these people who are constantly trying to give that propaganda or that suggestions so you can simply see nothing changes. These are words. And the same thing with your brain. When you stop believing in the source, being a credible source, then you will stop re re reacting to it because you already disqualified the source to be worthy of your attention. Hmm? So when you understand that these people are not any deity, they're not in you, they're not you, so you will see that they cannot have any say about who you are, what you are, what your gender is or not. These are their suggestions. Hmm? These are their choices. The same thing with the brain. Keep saying things because it doesn't know what it's saying. But it is capable of making different kinds of thoughts created. Because that's its job. That's its expertise. Brain is created one of its job is to make thoughts. So it gives all kinds of suggestions because it's possible to make those suggestions. Because it has learned that such things is possible to be in the world. And what's possible, it makes thoughts about it. And you know, believe it or not, brain also makes thoughts about things that are not possible. That's how inventions come together, you know. It conjures up things. And it's up to you to judge and see the feasibility of what the product it has designed and suggests, and then hence aeroplane, new technology, things that didn't exist, yeah? But it's capable of producing it, yeah? But you are the only one who can turn it into actuality or not. That's about the abilities of the brain. But when it comes to your gender, brain cannot do anything because it's not to do with thoughts and producing it. It's already produced you, who you are, what you are, in the womb of your mother. The rest of it is just statics that the brain spits out like it spits out anything else about so many other things in life. But it is up to you to see its relevancy, letting it fall by the wayside, or allowing something that it suggests, whatever it may be, I don't know, jump off the cliff to become an actuality or not. You are the master and the power, and you should understand that. And the separation of understanding of the brain, thoughts, and you will set you free and bring that relaxation to you and separation from these sources of suggestions, which are not critical anyhow. All right.
No. Tanishk. Again, as I said, the key for your freedom is not into having to fight, resist, or being subordinate to a brain's thoughts. The key to your freedom from thoughts, and freedom from the brain's activity, is the recognition of the separation of the brain as an independent system and not a representation of you, therefore separation of the brain, you, and thoughts. Hmm? There is a you, and I've always been a you, before thoughts or brain was created and added to you 40,000 years ago. We, human beings, were living for millions or millions of years before we were able, given the ability to think or speak. We were like animals. That means there was a you before the brain. So they're separate systems. Hmm? We were living instinctively like animals do. Run, sleep, hunt, eat, have sex, and our gender was clear, no confusion, no debate, no discussion. Everything was hardwired. Hmm? But when we were able, given the ability to think hmm, and speak, then intrusive, different types of thoughts were able to find their way into coming to our attention. Yeah? Because the ability of making blocks putting it together, however we put it together, it shapes differently. But they were able, we became able to put these different things that they don't even match or jive, but put them together and then say, oh, that means something. No, it just means you put these things together so that's, that's how it looks. It doesn't mean that it's you. So there was a you before there was a brain, that there was a thought. So there is a separation between you, the me, and the brain, and what the brain is capable of producing, which is thoughts. Now, in our case, we use the apparatus of the brain to create certain thoughts that would help us in achieving what it is that we're setting out to accomplish learn something, study something, create something, design something, accomplish something, you know, invent something. These are what we, we use the apparatus of the brain, you know, this equipment, this organ, to facilitate and to figure out things, and that would be our thoughts. But the brain itself, uses its own apparatus to create 80,000, 90,000 thoughts a day. Not because it knows what it's creating, just because its job is to put things together and create thoughts. And then put it there for you, and you'd see if it's suitable or not. Your choices and your values, you make the vetoes and choices and selections. And that's supposed to be a tool to assist you not to believe in it as this is my God. What it says is true about me. No, it doesn't shit knows about you at all. It has its own function. You manipulate it, you use it to, as a tool to build something, and it has its own ability to make things up to. But still, because you're the boss of this entity, it's up to you to give any values or any relevance, any use to what it produces or just 
ignore it, focus on what you want to focus, and let it fall by the wayside. All right. Then Aman, stop talking to that guy. Simple. You don't have to convince him or allow him to talk like that. He's trying to abuse you and trying to derail you. So stop. When you see some people are not uh, with good intentions and it's not in line with your uh, choices and values, then don't talk with them. Simple. Cut them off. Column says, my ex-girlfriend abused me, and I'm still trying to get over her. Well, it is your decision to allow someone to abuse you or not. Otherwise, you have all the power to simply move on. Just let me warm up my tea, guys. I'll be right back. Okay, sorry about that. Andrea says, my girlfriend left me three months ago after a six-year relationship. We were very happy together, but I was nervous in 2020, and she was not honest to me, so we had a hard year. After a fight, she remembered every bad thing of mine in the six years. <laughs> well, that's that's how they do it. <laughs> they, get, they, <laughs> they accumulate it <laughs> and save it in a box. So one day, it's like a jack-in-the-box. That one of those boxes that when you just unlock the lock, everything comes out. And they, they pick their timing and they try to justify everything that <laughs> they decided on e to be your fault. That's how they justify. Uh, <laughs> and so, so she, she break up with me after that. I asked her for a second chance. No, you shouldn't. But she didn't want to do that. It was out of nowhere. Yeah, that's, that's usually how it is. <laughs> so don't worry about it. Let's move on. It says, I'm so depressed right now. Why? She wasn't life. She was part of your experiences in life. And there are a lot more experiences yet to come. my thoughts about how happy we were and how suddenly all we had 
disappeared and destroy me. No, it can't destroy you. What the hell are you talking about? Your happiness should be independent to relationship. If you come into a relationship to be happy, that's a wrong intention uh, for the relationship. If two people are coming into the relationship, you're coming in to be happy and she's coming in to be happy because you're incapable of making yourselves happy. So therefore you're dependent on the relationship to make you happy. That's a shitty... <laughs> um, uh, uh, what is it? Recipe for, <laughs> for a relationship. Your purpose for a relationship should be a relationship and some things that you will find in it. Not happiness. Your happiness should be independent of relationships. In other words, you got to be happy before you get into a relationship. Otherwise, if relationship is what makes you happy, then you're bound to that and limited to that, and you're going to be hanging on the relationship, which would mean hanging on to whatever, you know, she's trying to accomplish because for the fear of not being happy, you're going to comply to every goddamn thing that she's suggesting, or vice versa. That's not any recipe for happiness. That's a recipe for being dependent. That's never good anyhow. So your happiness should be independent of your relationship. So we have Nina says, Hi, Mehran, female 16, Slovakia. Hello, dear. Um, Nina, you're 16 years old. Um, I hope that your mom and dad are aware that you're here uh, because, um, you know, I just want to make sure that um, you have their blessings and permission to be here because uh, that's what I hope everybody, <laughs> when they're too young, I would like to make sure that they are under the... Uh, they're communicating well with their parents about, uh, you know, whatever they're feeling and so on. Nina said, two weeks I felt convinced that I'm gay, but now I kind of passed. And every time when I feel better, I doubt if I have OCD or not. OCD is a doubting disease, that's what the French call it, anyhow. And that's what it's going to make you doubt in everything. Yeah, that's no different than you turn the light off, but you turn it on again and turn it off again, because <laughs> you think you should do that. Because there's a certain kind of a doubt that if I don't do it, something else will happen. So it's something malfunctioning in our brain that makes us do things that really don't make sense, but we think that it might have a meaning. And I have to comply. You check the oven five million times before you leave that apartment, or you lock the apartment, and you know you've locked it, but you say, well, maybe I should lock it again. So you unlock it, and you lock it again. Why is that? These are all the same foundation as when you have other kind of subsets of OCD, HOCD, harm OCD, responsibility OCD, pedophile OCD. These are all malfunctions of the brain hmm? in their signaling system. And then it makes you doubt everything because that's its characteristics, doubting disease. And that doubt make you think that it must have any validity. Not because it has, but because I doubted the values that I have based on the suggestion and malfunction of the brain, so I'm actually in this vortex of trying to find answers between my values and the opposing brain's function of doubting my values or suggesting new things, and I'm thinking, oh, it was suggested, so does it have any merits, or does my values have merits? This is a conflict that is created that has got no validity or no uh, values or credibility in it but it's due to the malfunction of the brain because the brain does create 80 90 000 thoughts a day 
and many of them could be intrusive. But then we have another mechanism in the basal ganglia, in the striatum. It's called, it's like a lever. It's called caudate nucleus. Caudate nucleus is designed to regulate and shut down when the intrusive thoughts show up. It's like an automatic gear shift of a car where it reaches a certain speed, it changes to next gear automatically, and then shifts down automatically when your speed is low. It's supposed to do that automatically. But sometimes it doesn't. When it doesn't, then you pretty much got to grab onto the gear shift and force it into, guide it into which gear it's supposed to fall into according to that function of the car, speed of the car. Same thing here. Caudate nucleus is there that when intrusive thoughts show up, which it shows up in every single human being on earth, that's part of what happens in every one of us. Everybody has intrusive thoughts, one kind or another. But when caudate nucleus is functioning well, this is what happens. The intrusive thought shows up and you say, ooh, what kind of thought was that? Or whatever it may be in any kind of a uh, tangent. And then as soon as you recognize the intrusive thought, something that is uh, not to your values, it's just kind of you know, bothersome or irregular to your values, the caudate nucleus comes down and sh shuts it down and then the signal is gone that, hey, we are not interested in this. Done. But when caudate nucleus is malfunctioning, it doesn't do its job, like the gear shift is not automatically changing gear, up or down, then that thing lingers. That suggestion, that intrusive thought lingers, doesn't go away. And when it doesn't go away, you start thinking, oh, maybe it has merits. Maybe it means something because my brain is my intellect. So what it suggests, and it doesn't go away, then I must have an answer to it. No, you don't. There is no answer to be had. Don't fall into that trap. It's a malfunction. And for a malfunction, you simply learn how to fix it, rather than believing the malfunction to be the actual function, normal function of you. That's not the case. Do not allow a malfunction in the signaling system, in the function, normality function of the brain, to make you think that the malfunction is actually the way the function should be or the way how you are. These are intrusive thoughts that the mechanism to shut it down has is malfunctioning. Hmm? Then you learn how to manually deliver the instruction to the prefrontal cortex, respond to it that I'm not interested, and get it shut down by constantly ignoring intrusive thoughts. So eventually, through continuation of this manual signal being sent out about your thoughts and values about the intrusive thoughts, neuroplasticity takes place and the brain rewires itself and understands that these sort of thoughts, intrusive thoughts, are of no interest to this entity. And when it's constantly not being entertained, it eventually gets conditioned to know that uh, he's not going to entertain this. There's no energy exchange here. So I cannot get occupation in order to feel secure. The brain finds its security in occupation. That's why it keeps making faults. And when you engage in it, it creates a continuous occupation, which is how the brain finds, how the mind finds its security, how the brain finds its security. When you deny it of this, then it understands that it cannot create interaction and occupation, busyness, engagement, exchange through this line of intrusive thoughts and learns that in order for it to engage you, it's supposed to come with thoughts that are in line with your values. When it's not in line with your values, you will let it drop. You will not pay attention. And that gives a signal to the brain that this is the new way of you should be behaving, not your malfunction way, just how it used to be before malfunction. So you're rewiring your brain 
to learn again. Yeah? To learn again. Your problem is that you think the brain doesn't fall off the wagon. The brain doesn't fall off the track. That whatever it does, it's actuality. It's normal. It's value. No. Brain malfunction. So you got to reteach it. You think brain need not to learn. Once it comes to you, it's already learned and perfect. No. The brain must be trained. One of the uh, missions in life is not just to eat and shit and fuck and do whatever it is that you do and uh, you know enjoy pleasures and desires and after this and that so forth. That's, you know, things that we all do. But one of the missions, most important mission in your life is to train the brain. Not to take the brain as if it's already trained and credible to serve you. The brain needs to be trained because it's being bombarded with all kind of values and things from out there in life. That if it's not trained and guided by you, the you, the me that was there before the brain was added to you, it will always malfunction, will not serve you right. Will be directing you to the directions that is not your choices, but it's coming from the suggestions that it picks up from the world out there, which is uh, based on their preferences and what's available, not what your choices and values are. So you got to train your brain by guiding it, guiding it, corralling it until it learns. Like you train a horse, like you train a dog. If not, they just don't have focus and attention or pathways to just do whatever. And they hurt themselves, they hurt others. So your mission in life, one of them, so many, is to train your brain. And when you see intrusive thought, that means, hey, your job is clear. That's one of the things that the brain that is not trained, it does. And even the brains that have been trained can go malfunction. And you got to constantly maintain them by showing the way. You know? There was a song that reminds me. Uh, it was, a, I think, a German rock band. The Cure. And one of their uh, one of their songs were, yeah, I think it was "Show Me the Way," something like that. <laughs> so you gotta you gotta show the brain the way, not take direction from the brain. Yeah, you gotta judge the brain. All right, I hope that helps you out. Yeah, Nina. So I hope that helps you out. And Aman says, okay. All right. Yeah, it doesn't matter who calls you what. You live by your vetoes and selections and uh, preferences, your choices, Aman. Not by somebody call you gay or call you this or call you that. Yeah. And Joanna says, thank you. For what, Joanna? <laughs> Joanna says, the stupid media and propaganda is pushing homosexuality on people. I don't blame them for having gay thoughts. Well, this is one of the challenges that people are facing with these days. There is so much extraordinary focus and attention on bringing about or introducing uh, different genders as celebrities. You see, everyone is equal, and we are all born in one way or another whatever gender we are, we are all equal, respectable, and must benefit the same rights. 
But that doesn't mean that to favor one gender over the other just so that their rights are protected because their rights should be protected anyway. Everybody's rights should be protected. Homosexual, heterosexual, whatever your sexuality and sexual orientation is, you should have the same security rights to live your life the way you wish and be productive, a good role model for the society and bring about positive changes and positive effects for the communities and the societies that you live in and the world in general. We are all in it together. Got to get along and got to help each other to bring about a higher level of consciousness in this life. And we could be of all different genders and races and creeds and we still should have the same common goal, a better, higher level of consciousness for humanity as a whole. But trying to play one gender to become a celebrity, it could have a, a unfavorable um, influence on people who are simply are not in line with such values and it's unfair to think that subjecting uh, anyone to be feeling less than anyone else you know it's it's not beneficial to make anyone feel less than anybody else or someone is uh, is is um, is a celebrity and the others are not just because uh, he is uh, heterosexual or he is homosexual and make them feel celebrity i mean right now as much as I believe everybody has the right to be living in the life that they prefer and they select. I see that when someone says, I have a wife and three children, or wife and the children, or I just got married, in television shows, nobody claps. But when a gay person says, you know, I got married, Everybody claps. Why do you clap? Why do you think he's less than anybody else that needs a certain kind of encouragement? He's living his life and he got married and he's happy and and the other guy who's not homosexual also got married. If you clap, clap for both. If you don't clap for one, don't clap for the other because what are you doing? you are subliminally putting that person on a pedestal as a celebrity which could negatively influence someone who is not homosexual but is now being suggested a young person that that's a status that you must if you want to be feeling special you could consider well if it's natural for that person he will consider it anyhow. If it's not natural, then it shouldn't be encouraged orally as it is not uh, necessarily encouraged in any other way. I just feel that there is a little bit of an extra push on certain things that are, necess are not necessary. And I'm saying everybody has the right to live their lives the way they want, but there's no need to encourage it or advertise for it. Let people be, you know, don't create that, you know, separation in classes. So you wouldn't influence anybody. Don't influence the homosexual not to be who he is. Don't influence the heterosexual not to be who he is. Don't, don't create this. And I think this is uh, perhaps what Joanna is referring to. Mm. 
Right. right. Joanna, what about the protocol? The age and gender and where you're tuning in from. Would you kindly share that with us? Andrea says, thanks for answer, Mehran, but people say that some people without intrusions can change attractions and they have it like cow's milk naturally, even invented a form of a term for this now. It makes me, I don't understand what you mean, Andrea. Tanish Kapoor says, okay, sir, I understand that there is a separation between me and my brain. Thank you. Love from India. Love from Canada, dear. Chuck Stair says, hello, Chuck, 37, Pennsylvania. Nice to see you live again. Hello, Chuck. Thanks for being here. Guys, if you guys find this uh, channel worthy of your attention, I would love to see some of you actually sharing the videos in your social media and sharing the idea, the, the idea of this channel and helping people to find us, kind of little inward advertising. By the way, there are 18 of us here, nine likes. What the hell is wrong with you guys? <laughs> I want to see 18 likes there, for heaven's sakes. And Joanna says, we have a higher self. It's always in conflict with our thoughts. Because thoughts are not your thoughts. You know, there's a brain thought, and then there's your thought. The thoughts that are in conflict with your higher self are not your thoughts. The brain's thoughts. And when you understand this, which seems to me, Joanna, you understand, then it becomes a safer place for you because you don't have, an, you don't have a belief as a superior credible source mounted on your head. You understand that what's mounted on your body, in your head, is a brain, is apparatus, but you're still the judge of it. Not that this is your moral compass. In the video that I produced called, Are You or the Brain is the You? You will get to know exactly through scientific experiments, not just philosophical points of views, scientific experience what Aristotle talked about a thousand years ago, but now proven beyond the shadow of the doubt by Dr. Speary, Dr. Penfield from Montreal in the 1930s and 1960s, through neurosurgery and neuroscience, and through the experiments that they have put in, Dr. Owens, Dr. Leibet, these are all Nobel Prize echelon of studies and research. And if you watch that, it's about a 49, 50 minute video, but it's elaborate. To understand scientifically proven that you're not the brain and brain is not you. And there are aspects of you that the brain cannot reach. And specifically, you can see in Dr. Owen's experiment that shows even a demolished brain in vegetative state still is conscious and that conscious is not because the brain is intact it's something beyond the brain that actually keeps the awareness not the brain itself because it's proven that in an accident the brain is demolished but there is that awareness where's that awareness coming from not from the brain that's already shot but through their experiences they show that still has understanding, awareness. That awareness 
is beyond the brain, and that awareness is you. Dr. Penfield and Dr. Sperry, by cutting the, you know, the corpus callosum, right, which connects the two hemispheres of the brain, they still prove that the brain functions as one. There's no change. How could you cut the brain in half and not become two people and not to sever and still function? And very, very minor, subtle differences shows, which took a, a Nobel Prize winning research to prove that there are little subtle differences in perception, but nothing else changed. Why nothing else change when you cut the brain in half? Because there is a you in there who's operating in a higher level than the actual brain does. That's why the brain is not you. That's why when the brain conjures up nonsense, you should not be taking it as a source, a credible source. It's its function and malfunctions. And of course, Dr. Penfield and amazing study and experience of Dr. Leibet. For heaven's sake, you guys cannot believe what's in there. Watch that. I'm going to put the link up here. And I want you guys to enjoy learning about your brain by not just philosophical dis discussions that we do often, but by scientific way of understanding the scholars who have worked and showed beyond the shadow of the doubt what we're talking about here. Hang on, I'll give you the link, and I hope that you guys take advantage and make some tea or whatever your preferred beverage is and enjoy this, learning about what these scholars have done, which sets you free on certain knowledge. It's so important for all of us to know. All right. John Rubolis says this program is like an instruction manual for the brain. Very helpful. Thank you very much. You're quite welcome, John. Uh, let me know your age, gender, where you're tuning in from. And <laughs> Chuck says a jack in the box of bullshit. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Yeah, and Joanna says, uh, no, Joanna doesn't say, PRM38 says, hi, Mehran, I am male 18 from the U.S. I am currently talking to this girl uh, that I'm very attracted towards. However, I suffer from HOCD, and my libido is very on and off. Do I keep talking to her? Yeah, of course. Why not? Because you know that this is a malfunction of the signaling system of the brain. So you're not going to deviate from your directive and what you know your preferences and values are to allow this narrative to constantly be there to rewire your brain towards something that you don't prefer. So you constantly ignore what is not in line with your values, the suggestion of the brain, and you constantly focus on what it is that you would like to select and you prefer, which is your natural inclination. Talk to the girl. But you don't have to push yourself that I'm talking to the girl to see how uh, Stud muffin I am to check and prove to myself that I am who I've always been and what my preferences are. No, talk to the girl without pressing yourself that I gotta get a hard on. No, talk to the girl because you enjoy talking to. Her. No agenda. Hmm? No, it, you're not talking to her to prove to prove anything to yourself. 
you're just talking because that's what you want to do and let this do the rewiring rather than not talking to her and the brain's suggestion constantly be there to rewire you because hmm? then it becomes more difficult to kind of uh, you know bring yourself back to your uh, correct uh, uh, directive for you and uh, PRM says I feel dishonest and quality because of it no 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 dishonest is what's interfering and intruding in your values that's dishonest the brain is being dishonest not you understand this very clearly the brain's suggestion is not the honest because you're thinking of the brain as a credible source hmm? but when you understand that the brain is not a credible source is not the intellect is not the you it's added as an apparatus to you then therefore then you understand that the brain is dishonest is not following the directive of the master it's gone haywire so you be the judge you as a judge will put the brain's function not as a credible source and you focus on what you need to do to retrain the brain The funny thing is that when a suggestion comes to your head, you treat that as honest. But when it's contradicting with your values, you don't treat your values to be the honest just because there is a suggestion. It's like if I'm walking in the street and somebody tells me, you're an asshole to me, or you're a thief. And now I take that person's suggestion as honest and me who thinks, oh, I'm a thief, I'm not a thief, I don't like to be a thief, I, but that suggestion makes me think, oh, I'm not honest if I say I'm not a thief. No, you are. The person who said it is not honest. Hmm? But you get bamboozled by paying attention with what the outside is extending to you, throwing at you, which your brain is also outside. In the video that I have made, that it says, <clears throat> it's proven to you. I have proven it by the way of uh, experiment done, done in a laboratory in quantum physics, that you're outside of the brain. You're not the brain. Beside the fact that Dr. Schwartz in his book of Brain Log has proven that you're not the brain, brain is not you, I've used a different method of proving to you, for you, to see that you're outside of the brain. Hmm? In quantum physics laboratory, they had a electron gun pointed at the wall and they shoot electrons. And what it creates the impression is a straight line. So they put a they put a steel plate with a slut not slut slit sorry <laughs> slit in the in the in the this in this plate steel plate between the wall and the electron gun and they shoot the electrons. On the wall the image it would be a straight line. One slot or <laughs> slit i gotta get that straight and then one line of the electrons on the wall behind the steel plate hmm? now they they put another opening slit right beside this one on the same plate now we have two opening two slits and then they fire the electron guns. Suddenly they see, my goodness, there are many lines, not two straight lines, 
the many lines, 20. He said, what the hell happened here? So because they couldn't understand what happened, because they were acting like overlapping waves now, instead of lines and electron guns being used. So what they said, the scientists said, we want to take a peek into the experiment of the harnessed and com uh, uh, conformed um, laboratory. So in order to take a peek, we now should put an observer, an instrument, which this instrument measuring what's happening is not part of the experiment. It's just an observer. It has nothing to do with any connection with the apparatuses, the electric gun, the, the steel plate, the wall, none of that. It's just observing. So it's outside of the experiment not part of the experiment. Once they place this measuring device, the observer, to peek into this experiment to see why there are so many lines instead of just two lines, because there's only two slits on the steel plate, and they fire the electric gun, the, the uh, electron gun, the electrons behaved as they would. Only two lines no longer 20 lines or 10 lines. They figured because there's an observer and the observer is not part of the equipment, is outside, independent, separate from this experiment, this apparatus, it was like the electrons had seen the principal in the room and they behaved. So when there is something observing an event which is not part of the event as the equipments of the events are, the event behaves differently. Now I want you guys to do this, what I'm going to suggest to you. To see when you put an observer to the production and the function of the brain and you will see what happens. So what I want to ask you right now is to simply look into your brain, however you see your brain, however you imagine your brain, little rooms, compartments, neurons, however you imagine under the rocks, little dark rooms, However you imagine the real estate of your brain is, I want you to look in all these nooks and crannies and the rooms, or however you imagine the real estate of your brain is, I want you to look and search for a thought being created. I want you to look everywhere in all the rooms of your brain, all the neurons, you follow them, all the nooks and crannies, under any rock and any part that you could think that that's how your brain looks like. Look inside and look for a thought being born. Look for a thought, a new thought. Just look in that room, in that corner, wherever it is you're looking. Keep searching for it. When you're looking constantly, you will find no thoughts. Blank. The ones who actually could not find a thought, put a one while you were searching actively, looking in every corner and nooks and crannies to see a brand new thought being born. Could you all put your results there? If you didn't see, didn't find any thoughts while you were looking for it, put a one. Come on, guys.
That's it? Only one of you were listening to what I was saying? <laughs> Am I wasting my time here? It is not about you creating a thought where you're looking for. It's about seeing the brain's thought being created, looking for it, searching to see where a thought is being created while you're looking at every room or the real estate of your brain. That's what you're doing. And when you do that, you find no thoughts because why? Because what's looking for the thought is that instrument, the observer that was being used in the laboratory. Hmm? Because the observer is outside of the laboratory equipment and the experiment, the experiment changes. And because right now, when you did this, the brain stopped making thoughts intrusive thoughts or other words, that means you who has been searching for thoughts is outside of the brain. Just like the measuring instrument was in the quantum physics laboratory was outside of the experience. So because you cannot find any thoughts, that means your brain behaves when you're supervising it, when you're looking at it. And because it behaves, that means you're outside of the brain, you're not part of the brain, and therefore you make changes as an observer, which tells you you're separate from the brain. Hmm? So, this helps you. If you see the videos that I've made, the video that I've made in here, which I think uh, I'm going to see if I can find it here. And I have these two There it is. This is, you are the observer, not what your brain says you are. So that's the longest version, all four parts together. It's a four-part video, but I'm putting this long version here for you. You can go to it and either watch it separately or watch this whole thing. And that is where the experiment is discussed. So, honestly, there's 17 people. You, you didn't hear what I've been saying? <laughs> I only got two ones here, and it looks like nobody else is. Are, are you guys washing dishes and listening to what I'm saying, or are you actually here for something, for heaven's sake? With all that passion, I explain it, and here they are. <laughs> nobody listens. That's great. That's why we are not really known around the world. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> uh, RC1 says, I'm currently getting a lot better with HOCD with your help. However, I still struggle with the real feelings from the illusion that comes when I'm not anxious. Any suggestions for helping ignore it? No, just ignore it. Simple. Just 
Focus on other things. Focus on things that really matter to you. Understand that it's okay for the brain to make nonsense. We're okay when people say nonsense and we clearly see it and we don't have any, uh, you know, uh, in any need for any proof. We just say, okay, that's different than my values, therefore he's full of shit. That's the end of it. And the same thing you got to do with the brain. That's different than my value and my preferences, my choices, therefore it's full of shit. That's the end of it. You don't need any proof or any agreement or any recognition of your brain about its malfunction to be sure that, oh yeah, it's malfunction and I am who I am and I can be who I am and what the brain says is not true. No, you don't need that affirmation or acknowledgement from the brain. Brain is actually an idiot. Just like you see how different people are out there, you have to understand the brain is also different. It's not you. Simple. Very simple. But you've been brainwashed all your life that the brain is your intellect, what it says. What it suggests, or oh, might meet no. It's a dumb shit. You're the intellect. Huh? Watch the videos that I have on this basis on the playlist called Intrusive OCD HOCD short videos. Those are gold videos, <laughs> I must say. <laughs> All right. Nina says thank you. You're quite welcome, dear. Joanna P. says, I'm 28 from Toronto, Canada. Ah, Canadian, eh? <laughs> the other two ends of the pendulum. I'm here in the West Coast, and you're on the Atlantic side. All right. And um, Chuck Astaire says, piss and shit, and F should be the name of your self-help book. Okay. All right. Indilagani says, salam, Mehran, salam, Indilagani. Says, Khubasam. <laughs> it's a K-H. It's a K-H pronounced H. H is Hubastam. It's missing the K to, to sound Khub has them. A little bit of strong ch in there. All right. It says, what should I do with old videos of my ex? What do you want to do? Put them on a USB and put them somewhere that you don't keep watching it. Simple. What do you want to do? Rewire yourself or encourage yourself to oh, I'm missing this because all on the video are the good stuff. There's no fight. There's no discrepancy. There's no differences. There's no uh, hardships or the arguments in the on the videos. You don't video those. So what you're doing, you're enforcing the good stuff, which then you say, oh, I miss her. Why did I let it go? Why did it happen? Because you don't see any of the shit that was going on. You're only seeing the selective, uh, you know, pleasure uh, parts of it. So obviously... File it somewhere so you won't be watching it. That is, and eventually, when your life changes and then you have no value for them anymore, and you wouldn't be simply hanging on to them for no reason. And at one point, you will throw it out or you keep it. Who knows? It doesn't matter. And um, delete or archive. Also, I discovered as a man, I love protecting and caring for a girlfriend. I hope to have this feeling again. Yeah, you will. You always will. It's not a problem. Chester is here. This is male, 27, Hawaii. Aloha, Mehran. Aloha, Chester, dear. Good of you to join us. This is glad I could make it today, even though I couldn't make it last week, Saturday. Hope you're doing well. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. And good of you to join us. And how is Hawaii, my homeland? This whole business of uh, but that's going on, which you can't even talk about it, has deprived me from seeing my homeland. <laughs> I want to go back to Hawaii. <laughs> well, that's my adopted homeland. <laughs> I am. Canadian. 
All right, all right, all right. In the Lugani says, let's help Mehran get this channel exposed to more people. Yeah, for heaven's sake, look at us. With the content that we have, which is most really important, I believe, we have 17 people here. Why? Is there something wrong with the uh, title? Or nobody knows us? Why? All right. Ash says, I'm losing the will to live. <laughs> Come on, Ash. Says, my sex drive has gone. <laughs> my brain keeps telling me to come out to everyone. My sleeping pattern is a mess. I live in a house where I avoid everyone every day. I feel stuck. Can't eat properly because of my avoidance. Nutrition is bad. I'm almost convinced. I just give up the situation I'm in feels like it okay okay look your your brain is too active and you need to go to your psychotherapist and understand what the brain is doing and just focus on life rather than focusing on getting an answer. You're too focused on trying to get an answer where there is no answer to be had. The interference of the brain is at its peak and you are constantly fighting with it. That's what makes you feel as if you should be convinced of what the brain suggests rather than being convinced that the brain doesn't have a direction or a goal. It just wants to argue, remember? You said that yourself. Because it just wants to argue and it cannot come back and affirm or enforce what you, the you, is saying, you don't get affirmation or agreement from it, then you think what you're saying is wrong because you didn't get an agreement from it. But it's a brain. It doesn't have an intellect to agree with anything. It just wants to argue to find security in the argument. Hmm? Because it's, it's floating around. You give it a place to rest by meditation, by not paying attention to it, by not arguing with it, but not by not looking for an answer or affirmation to your values from the brain, you will then take that authority that you have given to the brain away from it and back to you. You're the authority. Your choice and preference, which you are obviously trying so hard to argue with, that's the only thing that counts. And you need not argue with anybody or anything about it, including your brain. You don't need to convince your brain to get permission to be who you've always been, who you prefer to be, who you want to be. You think the brain should agree with you before you can be who you are or what you prefer to be. No. The brain has no say in that. Hmm? Because... If you were what the brain is suggesting you to be, or that you are, you would not even have these discussions with the brain. It's like, I don't have a discussion with my brain about that I'm a heterosexual. No discussion. Yeah. I don't have to, you know, there's, there's nothing, you know, there for me to have a discussion. That's why, because I am what I am. If the brain conjure up or suggest something that is not in line with my values, then I would have a discussion. Hmm? The fact that you're having a discussion, that means you're not gay. 
because I have no discussion because I'm heterosexual, right? There's no discussion going on with me being heterosexual. But there's a discussion going on in your head for the brain suggestion that you're not heterosexual. There's a discussion. If there was no discussion, then you would be whatever it's suggesting, right? But there's a discussion. Why is there a discussion? Because there is discrepancy. There's conflict. And you got to always go for the you, not the brain. The, there is a convincing of the brain needs to be done. And you accepting something that the brain, that conflict that is going on, tells you that you're not gay. Because if you were, it would be like my case that I'm a heterosexual and there's no conflict in my idea of who I am. There's no discussion necessary. But if there is an intrusive thought or HOCD suggestion, then there would be discussion because there's a contradiction, conflict. So what you are is not based on the fact that there's a contradiction. What you are is based on the fact that you are actually rising up against the suggestion of the brain, which causes discussion. There would be no discussion if you're at peace with what something that is would be you. But it's not you. That's why there's a discussion. You know, you don't argue with your friend about something that you both agree. You argue because that person has a different opinion that you have about something. That means there's a discrepancy. No? There's a contradiction. Which means you're not of the same value. If there was, there would be no discussion. It would say, yeah, uh, you like oranges? Yes, I like oranges. Okay, great. But he says, I like oranges. He says, no, I like uh, apple. Then He's trying to say, no, you like oranges. No, I don't like oranges. I like apple more. So, <laughs> so <laughs> that should tell you clearly you have a discussion with the brain because there's a conflict that it's suggesting something that is not in agreement with you. And that's what you should focus on, not what the brain is trying to tell you. It's like, you know, okay, you, your friends keep saying, you, know, you you like orange. So, no, I like apple. Why would you constantly listen to his argument about orange? That's good for him. Same thing here. It's good for the brain. But it's not you. That separation hasn't sink, sunk in, Ash. But I suggest you talk to your psychotherapist and then see... Uh, you know, if they can come up with uh, ways that you would uh, maybe uh, find them more uh, uh, explanatory. You see, Ash, you're looking for an answer to be given to you. I'm saying you don't need to look for an answer. You live by your choices and preference. You don't need an affirmation of your choice or preference from your brain or anybody. You choose this, you do that. That's it. I don't need my brain to say, oh, yeah, you are this. No, I say, I am this, I am this. Because I've always been this. That's my inclination. That's what I like. And this is what you're telling me. Yeah? You know in your heart that you say here that you're not gay. So that's all it matters. It doesn't matter what the brain or your friend or this and that, so forth, suggestions, opinions, ideas, images, whatever comes up. All it matters is the you, what that believes, wants, selects. And you've done that. 
And now, simply ride on that. Live your life. Don't look for answer. You're looking for answer from some stupid shit called brain to give you an answer. Hmm? Apparatus to define you. Fuck that. <laughs> Pardon my French. All right. All right. Jeremy Bailey says 37. God damn it, guys. There's 20 of us here, 16 likes. What the hell is going wrong? What the hell is wrong with you guys? That's a cover charge. <laughs> I want to see 20 likes in there, for heaven's sake. All right, Jeremy says 37, Mail UK. Hi, I'm currently having very depressing feeling and feeling very lonely after being ignored by my ex. Is your ex the only woman in the world? You have created her to be the entirety of your world, which is a disrespect to the whole spectrum of opportunities that we all could benefit in this world, that exist in this world. You've turned the whole experience of this journey of life into attention of one woman. What has she accomplished in this life that has become the center of your life or center of this universe huh like the clocks don't work if she doesn't pay attention to you but the sun doesn't come up is that how important she is or it's your desire for pleasure and seeking validation in an opinion of someone else about you is where you find your solace and when you find your happiness and foundation this is total bullshit. You're building your life on somebody else's oscillation and resonation. What kind of a bullshit life is it that you're trying to build? On a slippery slope? On a staggering foundation? On a foundation that's not stable? An unstable foundation based on the opinion and the affection of another person towards you? That makes you solid? That's what you're looking for to build your life on? What has she accomplished in this world that gives her that kind of echelon of importance? Feed the hungry? Bring security for the children? Brings cure to the old and young? Old men and women? Grandfathers and fathers and mothers? And the need and sick? are benefiting from her efforts in the world? She bringing cure to the common cold? What the fuck is she doing that she's so important in your opinion? She doesn't pay attention to you. Who gives a shit? Jeremy, get your act together. All right, have respect for yourself, Jeremy. Otherwise, you know, you're gonna be meeting my ugly stick. You know, it's right there in the corner of the room and I haven't used it for a while because you guys have been behaving properly lately. Otherwise, you're all lucky that airlines are not, travel is not easy these days. Otherwise, I would be traveling, chartering a plane, going around the world, beating the heck out of every one of you that has got a motorcycle helmet on so you won't get hurt. But I'll be beat you on the head with that ugly stick for your insolences <laughs> of different kind. All right. And Ghetto is here. Mail 34 Italy. Mm. 
Robert says, hey, Mehran, Mail 24 Scotland. Scotty, beam me up. Good of you to be here, dear. It's been a while, no? Says, you'll remember me from a few years ago. I haven't been active due to severe mental health. I'm dealing with intrusive thoughts, bad panic attacks, and so on. Robert says, constantly think I'm going to take a heart attack and die. Yeah. Yeah. I'm familiar with that. And lost my job, lost my car. I'm not fit enough to do anything. I can't leave the house without having panic attacks and feeling like I can't breathe. I'm effing sick of it. Robert, why don't you check with your doctor to have a EKG done and you see the uh, heart healthiness of yours and if there is anything the doctor would be able to attend to it and then you can build on that fact and when the doctor tells you that look you're not gonna have a heart attack because you think so you will and just because you have a panic attack that doesn't mean there's anything actually wrong with your heart but these are the fears that you have because you really love your life and you love your heart and you're protective of it and uh, so many things that are so valuable in life for us that we then get intrusive thoughts of what if I am not able to continue all these things or accomplish all these things that are so important to me you know so you need to go through that route and get that out of the way. And then you need to get off your ass and actually, according to the uh, uh, advice of your doctor, if everything is okay, do walks, long walks, or maybe a little bit of a fast walk and start losing the weight, start meditating, Start loving yourself. Start engaging in games that you like, sporting games, lightly, based on your health standards. And then bit by bit, you rewire yourself that you're okay and you can make changes. And the changes come in small pieces. Don't look for a big change just focus on, look, I want to lose about 10 grams today. That's it. Fucking 10 grams. Which means my intake of calories should be less than my, uh, uh, my spending the calories. So in other words, if I need 2,500 calories a day to maintain my weight and everything else, I'm spending 2,500 calories and I'm taking in uh, 2,500 calories, I won't lose any. So if I know I, I need to spend 2,500 calories every day to maintain my weight, then I'll take in 2,000 calories. You know, just maybe a smaller meal or less of the junk to cut down 500 calories a day it's not much really or even 300 calories a day you cut it down if you have like 45 minutes of fast walk that's already about maybe 300 calories depending on how fast you walk if it's in the elements outside it will be more calories burned than if it's on you know a treadmill in the gym so it's not difficult all you have to do is take less calories in than what number of calories you are needing to maintain your, your weight. I don't know what your weight is and so on, but you can figure that out yourself. Your age and your weight, Google it and it'll tell you how many calories a day you need to maintain it and then take less calories. That will be a beginning start. Beginning start? Start at the beginning. <laughs> And check with your doctor to get those facts and doubts out of your head. 
and uh, you know bring in you know replace them with facts and then uh, you're on your way and make small changes and they'll be fine and of course continuously be in touch with your psychologists psychotherapists and uh, benefit from their guidance and then uh, you know uh, psychology and mental health is something that they have really improved a lot and have lots of research on that and it's probably one of the most advanced fields in in medicine and sciences today they've uh, you know they've reached many different uh, um, they've conquered many different fronts on that topic <laughs> Joanna says YouTube is shadow banning this channel because they don't want people to heal. They want us hurt and divided. Hmm. Are they that intelligent to know what we talk about in this channel? And what we talk about in this channel is pretty much nothing derogatory to anybody or anything and uh, Joanna says Mehran maybe try sensationalizing your title and I hate to suggest clickbait yeah I know but if you put a celebrity name on the title what should happen uh, Hmm. Yeah, well, I was hoping for a, you know, kind of a, the way you think, honest way of providing information to people. I mean, honestly, uh, when people find this channel, they mostly are in awe that the uh, content is so useful and so amazingly good. But I only have like 200 sub, uh, subscribers every month. It's very slow. It's been, what, eight years now? Well, I have only, what, 22,000 subscribers? That's kind of stupid. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> so I need help, guys. If you can promote it, promote it, for heaven's sake. I, you know, I'll probably weather and die uh, right here <laughs> in this channel. <laughs> I mean, the channel does. Chester says, don't worry, Mehran, you aren't missing anything here. Because of the pandemic, there's barely any foreign tourists at the shopping centers in Hawaii. Ah, uh, too bad. I love Hawaii. Hawaii is my home. I have the picture of different experiences and different sceneries and different pictures of different days with me and my son of different times that we traveled when he was a little boy and I have a picture of the Maui mountains and the beach I just miss it so much it calls me every day all right And Joanna says, and then after sensationalizing it, maybe discuss the celebrity's current issue and tie it into your expertise. Hmm. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, you're right. Shit, we have to do all these maneuverings just to... But, you know, the thing is... I'm not looking for people who are not looking for answer in order to bring their attention to what they actually are looking for. 
I don't want to have to have an excuse for them to come to ch my channel. I want their excuse to be they're looking for this topic. Relationship, breakups, hardship, or whether it's OCD or HOCD, things to do with their psyche, mind, thoughts, consciousness, fear, desire, ego, mechanical process, material process, order, all these things that is something that they want to know what, how their psyche ticks, to know more about their own psyche is why I want them to be here. But bringing a bunch of people for curiosity maybe brings them but doesn't keep them here because they're not looking for those topics. They just saw the celebrity's name and they want to talk about that. But then the channel starts going somewhere else. But I can see what you're saying. It's a very clever way. But again, then I got to then start looking at the daily happenings of things that are really irrelevant too. <laughs> but it's a clever way, actually. Tommy says, 23 from New York, how would you suggest navigating thoughts during intimacy or masturbation? It's up to you. What do you mean, uh, Tommy? You mean if you have HOCD? Let it be. It doesn't matter. It comes to your mind. It comes to your mind. Navigate it towards what it is that you want to focus on and allow the thoughts be there, but don't have to fight with them. Just keep. It's like, it's like a car that you're driving. Just listen to me. Hear me out. You're driving a car. And I remember when I was in college, sometimes my car, the tire was not balanced. And the brake was pulling one way more than the other way. It wasn't, it wasn't synchronized, calibrated. So when you're driving on the highway, the wheel is moving and it goes to the other lane pretty much. That's slowly. So what do you do? You keep trim it. Keep trim it. You keep trim it. You don't suddenly stop the car. You keep trimming and bringing back to the lane and to the direction that it wants to go. And you want it to brake. You don't bang on the brake. You know it's going to malfunction. So you slowly do the brake so it won't pull it so much. So you carefully kind of guiding it, corralling it until you get it fixed. Yeah. So that's your reaction when you're having sex or, you know, doing your business of uh, self, uh, you know, satisfying <laughs> techniques. So when these kind of images, thoughts come into your picture, you simply bring back what you want and want your brain to be projected. You bring back, just let that be. Don't try to kill it or destroy it or get upset. Oh, yeah, just, just okay, I know. It's disgusting. Okay, well, it's there, but I bring it back to what it is that you want. And you focus on the emotion that you're getting and don't worry about what the brain is suggesting. Just do what you're doing. And whether you have that come into your mind or not, the unpleasant threes or not, just know that your intention was with your woman. Your intention of you masturbating was for the woman that you are. You started out. That, you know. So the brain's activities and thoughts is not the defining motivation for what you're doing or what you wanted to do. Uh, they can be there because it's malfunction. But you keep bringing the steering, turning it into fine tuning and trimming it. You know, like the aircraft is flying and the aileron need to be trimmed just because it's yawing. It keep pulling this way. So, you know, you just trim it up. I hope that makes sense for you guys. So in other words, keep it up until eventually uh, the brain says you're not really falling for it. You're not really entertaining it. You're not really debating it. You're not really um, uh, interacting with these images or these things. You're just simply trimming it and getting back to what you were doing. You know, that's it. It's no, you know, because it's disgusting to you, whatever your gender is, certain thoughts are disgusting to you. And for you, this particular one at this particular time or any other time, it's, uh, you know, um, uh, unsettling and, uh, you know, uncomfortable naturally. 
that makes it makes you think that as if it's any different than somebody's thinking about something else. And there are people who, you know, like there are many women who are having sex and they're thinking about, oh, I got to take the children from the school. I got to put the uh, do the laundry. I got to do that. I got to do, and they're just having sex. But because it's not contradictory, but it's still something other than what they should be focusing on, what they intended to focus on. They're not focusing on their sex. They're focusing on the laundry or the children or the, you know, food or whatever it is. So these are also intrusive thoughts. It's not uncomfortable and having to do with the sexuality, but it is contrary to what her intention at that moment is, yeah? But they allow it to be there and they do their business. Now, if you simply treat the intrusive thoughts of the sexual nature also the same as the laundry or the food or the chores that you got to do at your job and stuff, then it wouldn't be a big deal. You say, okay, that's a fucked up thing. It's irrelevant to what I'm trying to do, but it's there. So I let it there, but I keep bringing my focus to, you know, what I'm feeling rather than what image or thought has shown up while I'm having this feeling. You just focus on the sensation that you're enjoying and corral yourself to the image and the thoughts that you prefer. Otherwise, you don't have to fight with the thoughts or try to dismantle or destroy them before you can enjoy what you're doing. Just understand that these are not your values, your interests, or your choices. These are intrusive thoughts. No different than thinking about some project or something else that's irrelevant to your, you know, sex, sex time or uh, sexy time, as Borat would say, <laughs> or your or whatever it is that you're, you know, you're, you know, masturbating work. Yeah. And then uh, it would be like pretty much not giving it importance and the brain sees that it doesn't give a shit and it starts not thinking that, oh, it can have a, your attention somehow. And then it'll rewire itself eventually. Hmm? Because of your lack of focusing on the images or the thoughts or the suggestions, and instead you're focusing on the feeling and what you're corralling it back, steering it back to where it is that you want, the images that you want to have, and so on. Keep bringing it in. As many times as the brain brings the other shit, you keep bringing what you want. And then eventually that shows that, hey, you can't have your way and bring your images into my uh, business. And it will eventually dissipate and it will be as you wanted it, prefer it to be. It's all about retraining the brain. This idea after the brain is trained is bogus. You gotta constantly retrain it and maintain it. You know, maintain. Training is a continuous thing for the brain. Ash says, thanks, Miran. I should know better than this by now. Yes, you should, God damn it. My uh, ugly stick has just got your name in bold written on it. <laughs> Watch out. <laughs> <laughs> and um, Ash says it's all these urges, lack of attraction, false attraction, and continues to haunt me regardless of the thoughts. My therapist is fucking useless. <laughs> okay, but you're not useless. You just right now cured yourself. Like you have the ingredients to free yourself from these because your understanding of the you, the real you, is there. The intellect of the whole thing is there. Now the challenge here is the statics and the interference with the you and the intellect and the values. Not the values, not the intellect, not the you not being there. They're there, the static. An interference is what you need to deal with. Not doubting about 
the roots of you and what and who you are. It's about clearing the clutter that constantly wants to bring in. It's like you have a certain theme in the party and some other people that are not invited keep coming in. So the integrity of the party and its intention is still there as it's always been. You just got to get out these people who are not invited. That's all. But instead, you think, oh, maybe the party should be for them. No, fuck that. You understand? I hope it makes sense. <laughs> all right. Ignore them that they'll eventually, and don't serve them any food, don't serve them any drinks, and uh, you know, inform the staff not to cater to them, and they eventually see they're ignored, and they eventually get out. And sometimes you might have to have some bouncers there too. <laughs> Stand your ground. <laughs> Relax. You know, nobody can change you in anything. You're always there. Well, Ash, you say, uh, you know, I have this perfectionism, yes, and you got to let that go. Because the whole world came out of a chaos. It didn't come out of perfectionism. The chaos is the perfectionism. But learning how to deal with things that are not in line with us will protect what is our values. Not knowing how to deal with things that could be thrown at us and attack us, then we, it would make us always vulnerable. But learning how to deal with it and being aware of such attacks, then it makes you seasoned and strong and able to withstand challenges and maneuver when needs to be maneuvered and protect yourself and ignore needs when it needs to be ignored. And these will be your strong points and weaponries to withstand challenges because you're aware rather than perfections. Oh, nothing is going to be thrown at me so I can walk without any, no, I gotta be able to be aware if something is thrown at me, I can either dodge it or catch it or you know, bat it away. That's what you're supposed to get good at by these things. And we become stronger mentally by understanding the limitations and the mental challenges that every one of us human beings are dealing with. And, you know, every one of us have some kind of a mental challenge. But the fact that you understand this brain is a new brain and it's got lots of deficiencies and malfunctions, but you are aware of it, that awareness sets you free, not to fall for the bullshit. Hmm? And you say, I sit all day long and uh, have no real purpose anymore, so I just sit around in bed or in my room dealing with this BS. Well, why don't you put your knowledge to work? Start a YouTube channel. Talk about this. Because when you keep talking about it, you're actually helping to rewire your brain because your knowledge is overtaking the bullshit of the brain. Because you constantly are in interaction with the brain and trying to counter certain attacks hmm? rather than you keep encouraging yourself and enforcing what your selection and beliefs and preferences are. You're constantly trying to fend off rather than promote what you say. You're trying to suppress what the brain is supporting, is, is trying to influence you rather than you influence by expressing what facts and values are what have put you together. 
So by having a channel, you're helping others, and at the same time, you are having a purpose. And the purpose is to train your brain and to help others who are suffering from the same thing. And that's a good purpose. Now, <laughs> yeah, Ash, that title would be really sensationalizing. That's probably exactly what uh, Joanna is talking about. <laughs> That's really funny. Alex Luchenko says, Good afternoon. I have some HOCD problem. I know that it's that it's it, and I know that I'm straight. It proves every day by itself. I go out of my out with my friends and I feel that I am not gay. But this thought is not gone. Doesn't matter. Your life is not relying on thoughts your life is about you and your choices and vetoes thoughts and suggestions are all out there whether from your brain or whether from other people different lifestyles different businesses different gimmicks and different activities they're all out there suggested to you every day either by uh, virtually or by you know out in the in the in the real uh, actual life uh, you go to a store, there are hundreds of different products. They're all there. But you react to them all based on your vetoes and your choices. So, it really doesn't matter what thought shows up. Thoughts are not life. Thoughts are feces of the brain because of its activities during the day. Every organ has a function. And when they do that, they take certain energy, turn it into something else, and then you judge that something else. If it's okay, you let it be. If it's not okay, you go to a doctor and check it and fix it, or, you know, whatever it is. And even if you eat something that doesn't agree with you, you don't, you don't eat that. Your intestine can malfunction, your... Uh, liver can malfunction, then you feel, oh, so it's creating something, it's not, then you go and figure out how to deal with it. When the brain malfunctions, you take it, oh, that's how it is, that's how, what I am. No, the brain is not you, you're not the brain, you're you, and the brain is the same as your intestine or any other organ. It's got its job, and its job is to make thoughts, so it takes, makes thoughts. But you still behave with it as anything else that is interacting with you in the outside world based on your vetoes and your choices. So let the thoughts be. Intrusive thoughts is part of every human being's life. You know, it's like saying, oh, nothing that is really contrary to your values should be actually in existence in the real world. Well, you can see all kinds of animals and the, uh, or, or elements or the, in, in the activities that are contrary 
to your philosophies and preferences in life. But they're all out there. So you negotiate your way through all these things and possibilities based on your values, vetoes, and choices. And same thing is with the brain's relationship with you. It conjures up and spits out things and you not choose them, choose them, select them, not select them, and judge them based on your values and your choices. Not just because it showed up, so I should follow. No, there's no such thing. Who gave that kind of echelon to the brain? Through our lives, we've been duped to think that the brain is intellect. It's not. It's part of the bullshit of our existence, but it has its uses, so we use it for what we want and not use it for what we don't want. That's the key. Powell, 19086 says, how are you? Thank you, dear. Let me know uh, your gender, age, and where you're tuning in from. Robert S. says, thanks a lot for the advice, Mehran. I have already had an ECG and blood test done, and things came back fine. But these silly pains I get on my chest and heart makes me think different if you get me. Yeah, because you're really in tune with every little fart that your body makes, and that could be really fart or just little changes in the mechanic, mechanics or the metabolism or the function of your brain, and to the point that even if your skin itches, you say, oh, maybe that's an effect of my heart failing or something's happening to you, because you relate everything, even if your toe, you say, oh, it's stinging. Oh, maybe that has to do with my, you know, all of that is, is part of the OCD and, um, you know, anxiety. And that pretty much shows your love for life, which you should focus on. And start talking to your heart. I love your heart. I love you so much. I protect you. I take care of you. And there's so many joints and things here that you can feel all kinds of things and so on. But talk to your doctor to be clear about, you know, what is relevant, what is not relevant. And then you will, by knowledge of these feelings or stings or whatnot, are just not related or are, by understanding that from your, from your doctor, then you bring about new intelligence, new science, new information to you, and you start relaxing. Because the brain is operating on protecting you an amygdala that is constantly into uh, anxiety and protection will not consult your brain or your prefrontal cortex or your logic before it reacts to a seemingly perceived threat, which you have seemed to believe that, oh, this little zing means that, and then amygdala goes in to protect and brings about the anxiety, and you're into that vortex of thinking this all fitting because the anxiety is there the sting was there you know i just got a sting here or maybe my heart yeah she goes <laughs> you know this, this is uh, you know this is how it is but you know there's so many joints and things here and muscles and could all be part of that and um, you gotta you know believe the science rather than the brain because look the brain is not really knowledgeable it's just feels something and then reacts to it and conjures up something because we're so limited in knowing what these things are. So we want to know, so therefore we create something that could maybe make sense. And since we're lazy to really research and go to a doctor or check this and that, we just say, okay, maybe I should protect myself by believing it. That's better than, you know, better safe than sorry. All that. So just simply say whatever. I die, I die. As you know, Rocky Five, <laughs> Igor says, he dies, he dies. 
So I say to him, I die, I die, fuck it. Can't have that time to constantly worry about it. Otherwise, it's going to kill me before I die. Hmm, does that make sense? <laughs> All right, all right, all right. Now, we have diminishing numbers. Holy shit, 14 now. We were really popular. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, that's right, Ash. I got to come up with all those racy titles. Uh, <laughs> Robert says, uh, I've been taking small steps and stuff by going small walks, but it always feels like I'm going to collapse. My legs go all weak, etc. It's extremely frustrating. I can't get to achieve my goals. Well, go with a friend so you'll have a little bit of a moral uh, encouragement and you know there's somebody there so you kind of relax you got to take all those fears out by braving it and at the same time knowledge by talking to your doctor and then braving it and maybe have a friend along and then slowly do other things and you say hey i can do this i feel all right don't overdo it but retrain yourself joanna says yeah but at least it will draw them in the subject, will be topic, but tying it in to the celeb will just draw them in. Yeah, you're right. It will work the algorithm. Mm. Yeah, but make sure your topic ties it in with your expertise. Okay. It has to be the most popular celeb like Justin Bieber, <laughs> Ash's title is also interesting. <laughs> um, Prince Philip finally cures his. <laughs> okay. Um, John Wilson's comments all deleted by my administrator, Ash. Chester says, oh, okay, Chester's talking to Ash, okay, good. Chinmay says, good day, sir. It's been so long. Yes, Chinmay. Currently recovering from my surgeries. Oh. I had notified you of my concerns regarding a medical issue ages ago. Got it operated on. It's slow, painful, but, um, but I can take it. Yeah. Yeah, you're a man. <laughs> really catching up again oh good good i hope you're feeling better and recover soon chinmay and ingledani says indulgani says mehran do you have any advice for learning farsi how should i go about using it i think youtube would be easiest way and free find one of these uh, people who are teaching farsi on youtube i'm sure there are some and that would be it, I think. <laughs> and Deuces is male 20, the Netherlands. In the past, I had a thought about a friend to have a relationship with him, and it gave me a strange feeling of liking it. I, is it, it's killing me now, I can't handle the stress. Well, don't, just don't worry about thoughts. Let the thoughts be, 
and uh, it, it, it makes you feel like or it gives you the idea that you're liking it that's also another thought so why is it that when a thought is about you like a feeling that's credible but the actual concept for you is not credible it's all thoughts so just treat them the same ignore them stick with your own preferences and uh, choices <laughs> Ash says <laughs> Ash says <laughs> Look at this guys Ash says Justin Bieber gets beaten nearly to death by crazy tea drinking philosopher with an ugly stick. Well, that, that'll get a click. <laughs> well, guys, we have a, a hefty uh, super chat, which is unheard of on this channel, but always it's a generous Wayne that does that. I bet you it's Jane, it's Wayne Harmon. Says, hi, Marianne. Irish 48, yeah, I know by now. Wishing you and your listeners good health. My question is, how important do you rank every day meditation to overall health? I want to make it a daily habit, but most times forget because I'm so busy, but I feel better when I do it. Yes, well, Wayne has just contributed 50 pounds to our channel, which are highly appreciated, and it's highly irregular because we never get any <laughs> any super chat here. It's like they think it's a disrespect, but it's not, guys. The channel needs money, so go for it. And Wayne, thank you very much again for your support. You always supported this channel, and uh, it makes a difference uh, and very encouraging. In regards to meditation, yes. Meditation, I have first-hand experience that it is highly effective and highly important. It is a very important part, part of rewiring your whole brain, bringing it to a state of balance, while it encourages now neuroscientists know for a fact that encourages certain neurotransmitters that is responsible for being anti-depression, anti-anxiety, and help to manage intrusive thoughts better, namely GABA neurotransmitters, G-A-B-A, which increases by about 30% when you meditate for half an hour, which is very important information. And it also increases so many other neurotransmitters, serotonin, growth hormones and reduces the uh, uh, cortisol by 50 percent it's an amazing uh, increase and balance of the neurotransmitters when meditation takes place beyond the actual effects of a meditation which connects you with the universal energy which flows through flows uh, from one end of the universe to the other end of the universe and it all passes through you. But when you meditate, it enforces and encourages and promotes that flow, brings your attention to your connection with the universe, with the nature, which brings about that much more confidence, balance, assurances that you need when you want to approach a certain task. And all that helps in all aspects of whether it's sports activities or whether it's uh, dealing with day-to-day -day challenges of life. Uh, the fact is, because it is not immediate, like it's not like, okay, meditation, I thought of it, so it's done. Because it's not like that, and we are kind of lazy or been accustomed to not really go through long processes of things in order to achieve the results, we kind of ignore it and say, oh, oh, I'll do it. Or the fact that I know about it should also be the same. No, it's not. It's like saying, the fact that I know food is necessary, then I get filled if I think about it. No, you still got to sit down, go buy the ingredients, make the food, and sit down and eat it. But when it comes to meditation, you got to think of it 
as the same way you think about food, nutrition, or air you breathe, necessary for your survival and strength and fitness. But we only attend to what we see, which is our body. Weakness, the energy feeling, we feel that if we don't eat good, but we don't pay attention to our mind, which needs meditation to bring it to a higher level of consciousness, which then it operates in a different resonance, which brings about that well-being feeling in line with the well-being feeling of the body through nutrition and so on and so forth. So meditation is highly, very, more important than you can think of. But it has to be incorporated as part of your regimen of the day. Whether it's early morning, you get up, you do breathing meditation, which we have it on this channel, or you do concentration meditation, expansion meditation, which we have it on this channel. If you go on the channel and just search for meditate, the word meditate, a bunch of them come. One of them is 29 minutes or 28 minutes, is explained, has explained the way to do it and so on, a lot more. Or whether it's just a breathing meditation, the short version, which is synchronized with your short regular breathing, or the long meditation of breathing meditation, breathing exercise, which is longer. These are all very important exercises that should be incorporated in your daily lives. And that brings the balance because we're all about mind and body. Why is it we always think about and care about the fitness and what we eat and nutrition, rule of body? But we don't really pay attention to the same needs and care that the brain, the mind needs. We don't do that. And meditation is that food and that maintenance of the mind and the brain. One of the things that is very important for the, for the mind, for the brain, is to take the load off of it. You know, we go out in, and about and do our work, physical work, and we come home. The first thing we do is say, what? I got to sit on the couch and put my feet up to take the load off of my feet. We are aware of taking the load off of our body because if we've been working through our physical might or physical abilities, uh, if you hold something up for a long period of time, eventually you collapse because you can't take that weight so much, yeah? So you rest it. You take the load off of your feet. And so if you work out physically or about your jobs, when you come home, you have this feeling of, I want to put my feet up, get the load off of my body, get the load off of my feet. But most challenges in life are mental. You know, the responsibility for the children, responsibility to economics, make money, the jobs, the things that you do, all mental. The bills you got to pay, the challenges, and all these things are mental. But you never take the load off of your brain, off of your mind. You don't come home and say, oh, I got to take the load off of my mind. Just like you say, i got to take a load off of my feet. You put your legs up. You lay down. You understand that. But the brain, the mind, is constantly being given tasks. That's why it also goes haywire. We don't maintain it. And when we, when we have mental challenges, whether it's OCD or HOCD or any other mental fatigue, we wonder, oh, I must not be perfect, something wrong with me. Well, fucking A... You haven't been maintaining it, just like if you eat a lot, don't exercise, you're going to go to shits. But you maintain all that because it's apparent to you. Everybody talks about it. And there are easy ways to do it. The gym, the this, the that. I mean, meditation cannot take more time than it takes for us to go to the gym and do all the hard workouts that we do. And we do it willingly because we know how important it is. But it's much easier to do the meditation when we don't do it. Why? Because it is more difficult to bring mind to focus than bring the body to do some physical activities. Hmm? Because the mind finds its security in occupation, being busy. And it hasn't learned that it can find its calmness and power in not being busy. We haven't taught it that. We haven't let it feel the taste of it. And the power of it. So you need to sit down and bring that feeling of calmness by allowing the brain not to think about anything but one thing. Do you know why when you exercise, you feel really good after? 
afterwards when you played basketball or soccer or you went to the gym you feel really calm and relaxed because all through it the tennis or the soccer or the basketball or whatever it is all you have thought was one thing how to put that ball into the basket how to hit that stroke with the tennis racket how to pass the ball and dribble and score it's all one thing when the mind is only focused on one thing that's the same as meditation that's why you feel really good and relaxed after exercise it's not because physically you've created this solace and homeostasis that too but because your mind has been let off thinking about so many other things and just done one thing that exercise that sport that activity that game one thing that's why in meditation you're focused on doing one thing and the effect of it without any physical effort this time would be very heavily and lovelyly lovelyly felt lovingly felt and feels so wonderful and so powerful because not even you have stopped the brain you have helped the brain not to be doing so many different tasks and only focusing on one thing which is like an engine of a car being an idle rather than being used to be pulling the car and driving the car it's just an idle it's just there but not doing anything but it's alive so it relaxes the mind but at the same time it has connected you in the meditation to the flow of the energy of the universe which brings that that much more balance and homeostasis and you become one with the nature of existence the nature of the universe which is a tremendous support and power that you become one with so in all directions meditation is really important that we all neglect i used to do one hour meditation every day and then i lingered I mean, what is it? Um, slacked off. But when I do it, it's an amazing feeling. And if we can do it every day, and there was a time that we all, we always started this uh, channel. I mean, the discussion by meditation. But I didn't see, you know, maybe it kind of I don't know. I, I still think it's very important. So you can do it at home. And we have the uh, the uh, the um, kind of a guided meditation on the channel that you can use. I hope uh, it was uh, helpful. Uh, respond, and again, thank you very much for your generous uh, uh, super chat. Um, Good, Sloboda. That's good. <laughs> Joanna. <laughs> HOCD Biden Hospital. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Uh... <laughs> Well, Dusty says, uh, the problem is that I did a lot of compulsion in the past for like seven years. Does that create false feelings and attraction? I had some gay fantasy in the past. Is it because of all those compulsions? Well, you know, the thing is, when you have a obsession in OCD and you do a compulsion for it, well, that is why you do the compulsion because you feel like oh you like the switch on and off of the electricity or locking the door or you know washing your hands it's no different than HOCD it's all obsession compulsion and then the rhythm of it is that when you do compulsion you feel good that oh okay I dealt with this hmm? but the fact that you feel good because of the compulsion that creates dopamine 
So when dopamine is secreted, now after a while of doing compulsion and every time you feel satisfied and good about having done the compulsion, like washing the hand, then the dopamine is secreted. And this dopamine becomes the, the main reason for you to do the compulsion, and not the compulsion itself, because it makes you feel good and dopamine is secreted, so now you're addicted to dopamine. No longer you're doing the compulsion for the compulsion's sake, for the obsession, you're doing it to get the dopamine. So now you're in a different level of responding to the OCD. And then for a while, when you do it, like seven years, it becomes a habit. No longer you're doing it for the dopamine. Because in this striatum area, the goal-finding center is on the same place where the, re, re, the, the reward center is and then habit center is. All three of them are working together. So when you do the compulsion, you feel good, goal-finding, compulsion. Then the reward, the dopamine, feeling good. And then after that, the habit center is also there. So it turns into habit. When it turns into habit, it becomes much more difficult to get rid of it. You can still, but when you, when you focus on the health effect of it, then you can get rid of the uh, habit. Because they have done a research and found out for someone who smokes the cigarette, it is most effective when they bring the attention of the person or the person pays attention to the health effects of smoking and not smoking. Then it helps it to drop the habit. If you're not focused on the health end of it, it becomes difficult because it has become a habit now. Hmm? So that's why it is important for you to deal with OCD, HOCD or any kind, before it becomes a habit, because then it becomes a little bit more challenging. Yeah. So that's uh, what I have to say about that. Yes. All right. Ash, Ash, stop that shit. Don't even joke about that kind of nonsense. Why are you putting that in your head? Come on. If you don't, I will stop calling you Ash. I'll call you Ass. <laughs> Come on, love yourself. Have respect for yourself, man. The ugly stick. If nothing else, be scared of the ugly stick. Stop looking for answers, guys. Uncertainty, dealing with uncertainty, and living in an uncertain world is the power. Because then nothing can bother you because you will deal with it because you don't need to find an answer to deal with something. You can deal with anything based on your choices, not based on suggestions and I have to have affirmation of this way or that way and then get some kind of answers. No, I don't need answers. I live with my choices. Those are my simple way of dealing with anything based on my values and preferences, beliefs, manners, morals, and faith. If you have whatever it is that makes you be who you are, that's what you operate on. You don't need fucking answers and everything. Uncertainty specialize and become expert in living in uncertainty then you are the experienced captain that can withstand any storm in the ocean and navigate your boat to shores and destinations of your choices based on your abilities judgment and choices and expertise 
to help your boat to stay afloat and get to where you want it to go and never capsize because the waves, winds, or thunder. I don't need the smooth sailing circumstances to sail my boat. I'm a captain. I sail it wherever I want to go because I know how to deal with uncertainties. And fuck anything else that wants to deviate me and make me think I need assurances of anything in order to implement and exercise my choices, judgments, and vetoes. That's how you roll, my little friends. Salute to life and uncertainty, as we are the masters of negotiating an uncertain world with our choices and preferences. All right. All right. Do see, don't scan anything. Live for the present moment. Nothing else matters but your choices, regardless of whatever. Your choices now, is that's what matters. That's all. <laughs> Ash says, <laughs> I need to stop flirting with Mehran's clients. <laughs> Ash says, and Joanna says, I'll just order you off Wayfair and just pack yourself in a cupboard. <laughs> okay, you guys, good. And Ash says, Mehran, in the words of uh, Miyamoto Musashi, oh, Miyamoto Musashi, and Sasaki Kujiro, this is younger nemesis, for example, not nemesis, but uh, says, uh, you mind too much. You mind the people watching. You mind the people talking. I have no mind. Well, that's not Miyamoto Musashi. <laughs> that was in the, <laughs> or maybe in another movie, but it, it, it was in the Last Samurai when Tom Cruise was being taught uh, by that uh, samurai. And then the young man, um, brother of uh, um, I forgot his name. Uh, I know who you're talking about. I mean, I, I know who I'm talking about. <laughs> okay, anyhow, uh, that's what he said. Yeah, no mind. Too many minds. That's right. Joanna says, thanks, Mehran. I'll be back on your next live. Okay, dear. My pleasure. Thank you for being here. Delighted to have you. And Joanna says, makes me think 
What are these teachers doing to these kids to encourage this thought pattern? You want to stop having gay thoughts if they're unwanted? Then turn off CNN and turn off the TV. <laughs> Pretty much true. For at least one month. Yep, 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 yep. You see, uh, this bombardment of information and many of it to different people, unnecessary uh, information, it creates all kinds of um, um, inventory of information that brain not knowing the difference uh, is just mandated to make thoughts. So it picks up uh, such information that is, happens to become available to the brain in the consciousness and makes thoughts with it. And then the human uh, who is subjected to that uh, the production of the brain the things that because it's made by the brain it must mean something or I must you know entertain in some ways rather than just understanding that this is what brain does makes thoughts according to what's available and what somehow information has seeped through the uh, brain uh, through media and, and internet and uh, lifestyles and talk shows and so on and so forth but it's not supposed to be overly focused on uh, it's just what the brain does with whatever it happens to seep through the, the, the brain and uh, lodge into the inventory of the consciousness. And uh, that's why it's important to maintain the, um, the uh, clarity of the, of the mind by meditation. I remember we used to have a yearly meditation, special meditation, which was consist of two different kinds. A waterfall musugi, which was very, very cold uh, water uh, from the mountain in the middle of the winter, four o'clock in the morning, that we would get in there and then meditate and go into the waterfall and until the body stops shaking and the mind prevails and brings mind and body coordinated. That kind of gives the effect of confidence and the strength of mind to be able to believe in the fact that the mind has a power that can that you can use it to direct your life the way you wish it, rather than the brain itself to overcome your willpower. And so it gives you the willpower that you're seeking. And then the other meditation that we had was yearly, that was called Bel Misugi meditation, which through that you would sit on the floor, on your knees, and the bells would ring, a bunch of people, students had the bells, eyes closed, and you would chant a certain um, sentence a japanese sentence which the meaning of it didn't mean anything it didn't matter it, the fact that it was uh, directing the brain or the mind to only focus on one thing one thing that you didn't even know the meaning of it <laughs> so it was just like having everything else disappear and this was the occupation of the mind one thing and the bells were going and you were changing the rhythm of the pronunciation uttering of that sentence with the rhythm of the bell as it was changing. So it would start slow as the bells were ringing. To, ho, ka, me, e, ni, ta, me. And the bells would increase during that one hour and eventually get to to, ka, me, e, mi, ta, me, to, ka, me, e, mi, ta, me, to, ka, me, e, mi, to. And then you could go as fast as it could to the point then the hour would finish and the bells would stop and then everything would stop. And then in the brain, in the mind, there was nothing. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Even if you wanted to make a thought, you couldn't. And that state is where the maintenance of the brain takes place. Clears up, clutters, resets the brain to factory set <laughs> independent of all the suggestions and the information that's coming it is very important meditation and different kinds of misuki to maintain the brain to back to its health with all the shit that is being loaded upon it of different kinds and different kinds of different Suggestions and different ingredients are affecting different people based on their preferences and and uh, 
values differently. But it will reset the brain according to what that person uh, directive and nature is. But we don't do that maintenance and that's why uh, and brain is neglected and so much of the mental health effects of it we, we, we see. All right, guys. Uh, we have another super chat which I need to attention to again. Wayne, Wayne is <laughs> Wayne is pulling everybody's uh, everybody on his shoulder. Mehran, uh, Wayne says your answer to my question was insightful and brilliant. Thank you. You're quite welcome. You're quite welcome. This last part that I just mentioned was also part that I wanted to add to your question, which at the moment slipped my mind. But now it's complete. <laughs> and again, thank you very much for your generosity and helping the channel. It's highly appreciated. And so we go to to to, 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 to. yeah. <laughs> Ash says, God damn it, I'm so impressed you called me out on my bullshit. You're talking about Katsumoto. Yes, Katsumoto. That's what I'm looking for. Katsumoto-san. Katsumoto. Was it Katsumoto? I'm not sure, but I think it, it's, it sounds the right bell. Let's jump, double check. Yeah, 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 correct, correct. Cut some more. Oh, you know what? Katsumoto actually was a real character in the Japanese history. It says Katsumoto is the current patriarch of a line of samurai that have faithfully served the emperor of Japan for hundreds of years. Holy macaroni. Very interesting. Ah, so that's where that name came from. Well, we'll learn something new. And um, Ash says, I love The Last Samurai. Yeah, I do too. My son and I used to watch it all the time. It's an amazing movie. John Smith says, question, Mehran. John Smith, where is the protocol? God damn it, John. Age, gender, where are you tuning in from? I'll have my tea. Did you guys know it's like almost three hours? Give me a moment. I stretch my foot. My legs. I'll be right back. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, T. Yeah, that's right. These are just intrusive thoughts. And let's say, John. John, do I have that? John says, what is H in OCD? It's homosexual OCD. H. 
stands for homosexuals. Or uh, it could be heterosexual OCD. If, if one is homosexual, it could stand for homo, uh, heterosexual OCD. Because uh, sexual orientation OCD, it's changed, the name is changed to sexual orientation OCD. But it used to be called HOCD, homosexual OCD. Slobodan says, just how can I donate? Uh, I really don't know. I mean, there is a button that says donate or super chat or something. And then you can push that button. And if you have an account, I guess, set, you can do that. I don't know how it's done, actually. Um, maybe somebody can shed some light on it. Um, let's see. You too, buy. You can talk to your psychologist, a psychotherapist, to be guided how to overcome from HOCD. And at the same time, you may choose to watch the two playlists that I have on OCD and subsets of OCD and in specifically HOCD called Transient Intrusive OCD HOCD Negative Thoughts. And the other one, which is also a very important playlist, it helps you to see the separation between brain thoughts and you, which is very important uh, for this understanding. Uh, and it's called Intrusive OCD, HOCD Short Videos. And mind you, they're not short, but they're there. And so, um, and also, uh, to by let us know your gender, age, and where you're tuning in from, please. The T says, uh, the thing that pisses me off is that I know I won't do these things that are suggested by uh, brain, so why can't I just let it go? You can't. Let it be. You're trying to destroy it, destroy the, the creation of these intrusive thoughts, and that's where the problem is. Because the more you're trying to destroy it, the more you're in interaction with it and paying attention to it. The less you actually try to destroy it or dissipate it or make it stop, the more it will actually dissipate and stop because you're not giving it food of attention and to interaction with it. So it will see no engagement and no energy exchange. So it will just fall by the wayside because it's been ignored. So you need to stop trying to stop the thoughts and simply focus on the thoughts that is preferred by you and the activities that are preferred by you because that will result automatic dissipation of these intrusive thoughts in time because it will rewire your brain and through neuroplasticity because you're paying attention to other things but these intrusive thoughts, it will change the rhythm of the production these brains to lesser and lesser and eventually none and if they come back they all you always know what they are so you will ignore them again all right right now guys i think we have discussed everything that we could discuss here at this time and uh we um, don't have any more questions that I haven't really addressed. Induce says, may when you missed some messages, I think. Yeah, I might have, but I've already responded to them in different questions up there. So um, we can't necessarily answer all questions uh, because then it would be like, what, one-on-one -on -one, uh, uh, 
<laughs> you all know that I have a site called mindatsixtruth.com. You can go on my site, mindatsixtruth.com, and make an appointment for Skype consultation in regards to your relationship problems or questions you have about uh, the topics that we talk in here. And therefore, we would discuss and explore what's concerning you one-on-one -on, -one on Skype. And when you make a one-hour appointment, I will add one more hour to it on me, and we'll have two hours in that particular session to explore what's concerning you one-on-one -on, -one on Skype. Okay, guys, it's time for me to say good night for now. We will have another one at 9 p.m. Vancouver time. Uh, oh, maybe, possibly. <laughs> I'm not sure, but I'll try to have one, maybe 10 o'clock, maybe not 9 o'clock, because I've got something to do tonight, or maybe I won't have it. I'm not sure. You can check and see. And uh, But it's time for me to say I love you all. Thank you very much for being here and giving me the opportunity to share a thing or two with you. I wish you all well. Take good care of yourself, your physical and mental health, nutrition, meditation, all that included in that maintenance. And I certainly appreciate uh, Wayne's uh, um, contribution to the channel and uh, as always generous. And thank you, Wayne, for that. And in the meantime, be good to yourself, to the others. I'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.